To begin, 550 mils, or 582 grams, of 8% bleach was weighed out and placed into a beaker. The old beaker was put into a freezer and a new beaker was placed on a scale. 55 grams of sodium hydroxide was then weighed out and put off to the side. I forgot to record this bit, but you need to add the sodium hydroxide to the bleach solution in such a way that the bleach doesn't raise above 10 or 15 degrees Celsius. The bleach degrades above this threshold and you lose your yield. 40 grams of urea is then weighed out and placed into a beaker. The total urea mass is about 20% in excess of what you would theoretically need. I'll explain why later. Anyways, it's then dissolved in 40 mils of water. An estimate of just under 1 gram of gelatin is added to the beaker. This is to stop metal ions from catalyzing hydrazine back into nitrogen gas. It does this by keeping them in suspension. Here the urea solution is also added and it's stirred until it's almost completely dissolved. Once dissolved, the solution is placed into an ice bath and the temperature is brought below 10 degrees Celsius. The basified bleach solution comes out of the freezer at a temperature of about negative 10 degrees Celsius and is added to the separatory funnel. Reaction 11.4 shows the synthesis of hydrazine and this is the degradation of hydrazine in the presence of any metal ion catalyst. The bleach should be added in such a way that the temperature doesn't rise above 10 degrees Celsius. This should correspond to about five or six drops per second and the total addition taking a little over 30 minutes. The paper I'm following says three to four drops per second and 40 minutes, but they're using an 11.5% concentrated bleach solution while I'm only using a estimate of 8%. Here's what the solution looks like once all the bleach is added. It should have an off-white color. If it doesn't, your bleach is likely too concentrated. The solution is then heated to 72 degrees Celsius. Here in this highly detailed diagram I got from Canva, it shows you some things that will lessen your yield as well as something that increases your yield. About 150 mils of hydrochloric acid was poured out and set into a freezer. Next, the sulfuric acid was poured. Some people do only sulfuric acid, such as the tutorial by Nile Red, but doing it this way will lessen the salt load and give you a much purer product, allowing for more to precipitate. I used an impure form of sulfuric acid, just straight drain cleaner. Works just as well. Here I mix the sulfuric acid and hydrochloric acid. I'm just kidding. Don't do that. I'm mixing the water in with some sulfuric acid to make it a 50-50 solution. Checking back on our solution, it's gotten much darker yellow. Finally, it's about as yellow as it'll get and the temperature's reached 72 degrees Celsius, so it's quickly removed off the heating and put into an ice bath. Doing this slowly will decrease yield. As the temperature drops, if you've done it right, it'll get clearer and clearer. If it stays yellow, once again, that's probably because your bleach solution was too concentrated and your hydrazine yield will suffer from that. Once the temperature drops below 10 degrees Celsius, the hydrochloric acid is added in such a way that the temperature stays below 10 degrees Celsius. These thick white fumes is just the evolution of hydrazine monochloride gas. It'll soon clear. At this point, you should probably put on protection, unless you want a CTI, which is a chemically transmitted infection. Next, a chilled solution of the sulfuric acid is slowly added in. This time, it's okay to let the temperature rise above 10 degrees. It can go probably up to 30. The bubbles here, as well as in previous stages, is just the evolution of carbon dioxide gas. There might be little nuggets of hydrazine mixed in there for you. 
After a little while of adding the sulfuric acid, small bits of hydrazine sulfate will start to precipitate out, making the solution appear cloudy. Because I used green sulfuric acid as found in drain cleaner, my solution is a little bit cloudy, but that doesn't affect anything. After being thrown in the freezer and going down to about zero Celsius, I take it out and I decant off the top of the liquid and then filter the rest of it. Here I'm just wetting the filter paper so that it filters out easier. Here's how much hydrogen sulfate it looks like I got. It'll go down once it starts to dry out because most of this is just water weight. Here I'm trying to show you that it sparkles. Um, I didn't take photography in school, so it's not really working. Kind of, kind of unfortunate. I decided to take like chemistry instead. I don't know if that shows. Um, yeah, anyways. All right, now I just add it to some old hydrogen sulfate that I made. Uh, the old one's a little bit yellow, the new one's white, but I'm just gonna purify them both after this and I'll show you that once it's all added and I count my yield. So because I follow the paper pretty closely and I only got 30 grams, I feel like my bleach solution is under concentrated to that which I believe. This is due to it being old, and I haven't bought a new one yet. To purify it, just make a 10% solution of sulfuric acid and distilled water, then add all of your sulfate in. Here I'm actually using clean sulfuric acid and not old drain cleaner. The reason you want to make the solution acidic with sulfuric acid is because it decreases the solubility of hydrogen sulfate. I let it stir for a couple hours, then came back to it, filtered it again, and laid out to dry. Here's what it looked like after two days drying. I'm not going to wait anymore because I'm not going to measure this yield. The reason for that is because I added some old stuff into it. I have different runs and I added some old impure hydrazine, uh, worse runs than this one. So, it's not worth it for me to measure the yield. This is just what it looks like, and this is how it is. Thanks for watching.